Okay, we're back with part two of the unit Q review of electromagnetic induction. Okay, for the next one, um, I have a circular loop of wire, and the magnetic field is um, coming out at us because of the dots, and it's changing at a rate of um, B naught, which is a constant, times E to the negative KT. And so can you tell me if, uh, let's say the radius of this hoop is R, and let's put, um, let's put, a resistance the, the the loop has a total resistance of capital R, so R is resistance and and little R is the radius. Okay. First of all, can you tell me which way the flux will be? Or excuse me, which way the um, current will be induced in this in this loop if if the B if the B is changing with this function. Okay. So th this function is actually a decay function. If I graph B versus T. For this function, what it does is it starts out at B naught, and it um, swoops down and decays. So that means the dots are disappearing. So if the dots are disappearing, then this is going to try and make its own dots. So to make its own dots, um, it's going to it's going to have current going this way. Make sure I got that right. Yeah, to make more dots because the dots are disappearing. That's Lenz's law. It's going to try and induce current this way. Okay, could you give me an expression for flux? Tell me what the the magnetic flux is in this hoop. Okay, go ahead and tell me what the magnetic flux is. Okay, the magnetic flux is going to be the integral of B dot dA. But um, B is uniform. I know that it looks like it's changing, but it's changing with time. B is uniform with location. And um, B and dA's, let me show you a dA. Here's a dA. It's pointing um, directly out at us. And so so is the B. So you can get rid of the dot product because B and dA are in the same direction. So I just got rid of the dot product because B is parallel to dA at every location. Okay, now I can pull the B out of the integral because, um, because B is uniform at, at all points. I know it's changing with time, but it's uniform. Okay, so, um, and so then, that's magnetic flux. And so magnetic flux is just going to be um, B times, you just sum up all these DAs. So that's going to be um, B naught E to the negative KT. That's the B. And then times the area. And the area is going to be um, pi times little r squared. So that's the flux. Okay, could you tell me um, what the um, current will be in here? What will be the current that will be induced in here? Go ahead and try. Okay, so the current that will be induced in there, the I will equal the E over R. That's Ohm's law, you know, voltage equals I times R. So I equals the, the EMF induced over R. And so um, the EMF induced is going to be the negative derivative of the flux with respect to time. So it's the negative derivative of the flux, the magnetic flux, with respect to time. That will be the EMF induced. And then um, we'll divide that by R. So that's what I'm going to do over here. So let's do that. The EMF is, the, let's let me take the negative derivative. Now this is with respect to time this time. So I'm taking the derivative with respect to time. And so the derivative is going to be um, a negative, but then a, a, I have a negative there, but then I'm going to get a negative when I bring the k down. So it's going to be a positive k b naught e to the negative kt pi r squared. That's, that's the derivative with respect to time. So that's the EMF induced all over R. That will be the e, um, that will be the um, excuse me the I induced. Put it over here. That's how much current is induced. Notice it's changing with time too. Notice that it's decaying with time. So as as time goes on, you get less and less I in here. 
See, because the slope starts out really big, and then the slope is getting less and less and less, and this, and so it, it's just not having the same. You're not getting as much change in flux. Okay, um, here we have a wire. Here we have a wire that is um, it has current going up, and. Um, I'm going to take this hoop of wire. This is this is just a a square hoop of wire. This is air in here, and um, I'm going to first um, move it this way. If I move it that way, can you tell me which way the current will flow in here? Okay. Hopefully you tried that. Okay. So I'm thinking that there are axes over here. But the X's drop off, so you, they get smaller. They're bigger here, and they get smaller here. And so because of that, if I move it that way, I'm, I have X's going in there, but there's, they're depleting. And so this is going to try and make its own X's, and to make its own X's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to try and push current this way. Yeah, that's going to try and push current that way. Okay, how about if I um, move this instead of moving it that way? What if I move it this way? Which way will the current be induced now if I move it that way? Okay, I hope you tried. Um, the answer is that the flux isn't changing at all if you move it that way because um, there's... There's the same amount of X's going through if you move it straight up. And so there is no current. There is no current in the second way. Next one. Ooh, sorry to shake the table there. Okay, so here's um, a magnet. We're going we're gonna to have it head up through this hoop. Can you tell me two things? I'd like to know um, two things. Which way will the current be induced in this hoop? Um, and then secondly, which way will this, will this magnet be pushed by the hoop? This hoop is going to push this magnet. Which way will this magnet be pushed by the hoop? Okay, see you in a little bit. Okay, the magnetic field coming out of this magnet looks like this. Remember, the field shows you the direction a compass would point. And if I put a compass right here, it would point down, the north pole of the compass would be attracted to the south pole of the magnet. And so, outside of a magnet, the field lines go from north to south. And so the field lines are going like this. They're down. Okay, so the field lines are down. There's field lines in this hoop and they're down. And they're getting greater because this thing is heading up. And so that's, you're getting more and more field lines in here. So if there's more and more field lines, then this is going to try and make its own field. If the, if the field is downward and increasing, this is going to try and make its own field up. And to make its own field up, it's going to wrap that way. It's going gonna, it's gonna to go this way. So the current will flow that way in it. Okay. Maybe I'll put that in green. So current will flow this way. Okay. Now, if the current's flowing that way, then that means it's going to induce in itself a current that is um, up. Or a field that is up. So the, that's almost like you have this magnetic field, this little magnet here, that is north to south this way. North on top and south on the bottom. See how that gives you a, a field up? up and so you see this south pole it's going to repel that south pole so that south pole will repel that south pole so this is going to be repelled the force on this magnet is going to be down so when you try to push this through it's going to push back the other way It's top stuff. All right, so, um, I'll see you in the next video. That one went fast. Bye.